In this video, we're going to take a look at the J310 JFET transistor. So that is a close-up of it right there because the part numbers don't really show up on a camera. And we will build a circuit that demonstrates really how to cut off this transistor. So basically it's a normally on transistor. We're going to uh, set uh, the pins like this. The pin layout is left pin or we're going to make it the top pin in this circuit is called the drain so that is the left pin is the drain the middle pin is the source and the right pin is the gate so there is a current path more positive at the the uh, drain here more negative at the source we have a current path going through there it is normally on we have a gate over here where we control how much uh, current can go through and it is voltage controlled but unlike uh, MOSFET transistors it doesn't always block uh, current from flowing through a uh, gate to the uh, rest of the component and so that's something to be aware of but it's not a current controlled component and if you operate it correctly you won't have current going through the gate but it is possible so again this is just a simple introduction video I don't do a lot with uh, this component and uh, so I'm still learning myself but we're gonna set the drain one spot below the jumper there and uh, but I want to come up with some demonstration circuits both so I get better with this component and I can make videos to show other people how now the uh, LED we're going to put to uh, the jumper there, the long lead, the anode, short lead, the cathode. We're going to put to the drain of the uh, transistor there, the JFET. And to cut off this transistor, we need the gate for this particular one, 3 volts more negative than the source, the middle pin. And so we're using a DC power supply right here. So this comes from my uh, bench power supply as does this one I have 10 volts at the rail right now and the positive rail connected to the positive rail with that jumper negative rail to negative rail connected with uh, that jumper and so these jumpers are just alligator clipped from the uh, power supply so we have 10 volts at the rail it's actually on now uh, you should build circuits with the power off but this one will be more interesting with the power on and so we're going to take that 10 volts and set 5 volts at the source. That way we'll be able to get 3 volts or more negative than the source right there. So we have that resistor to the positive rail 510 ohm because we're dealing with 10 volts so that'll make sure that uh, the current never gets too high for things. So it'll keep things from overheating. It'll limit the current through the LED and it'll limit current through each resistor so they don't get too hot and the component also it will make sure we don't have too much current no, so now the LED is on you're going to notice something interesting this is one reason why I kept the uh, power supply on I can touch the base of the transistor and because it is voltage controlled it has capacitance within it that affects things a bit you can see that I can get it where it is basically turned on or turned off completely or somewhere in between based on the voltage when I released the uh, gate there so we're gonna of course control that more steadily with the uh, trim pot where we apply a steady voltage so again we're gonna take a 1 kilo ohm resistor because the gate should never have more than 10 milliamps of current flow through it ideally it has none for the most part and uh, it's not meant to be a current controlled device at all it's not a current control device I should say but current can pass through so there's like MOSFETs that don't let current flow through you just have to be aware of like static voltage high high voltage but uh, in any case we will set the uh, trim pot there and now I think the LED might be fully on let's uh, see if I turn this up a little bit if it gets brighter yeah, it did get a little bit brighter so it wasn't fully on 
but uh, it's on pretty well. So now we will turn the trim pot down, and you can see right about there it turns off completely. Some somewhere right around there. We could lower the the light here, and I think that's yeah that's just reflection coming down. Why we have a little bit of a glow, but it's definitely completely off there. Earlier testing, I found it to be three volts more negative at the gate than the source when it turns off completely. So I got uh, the multimeter there. We will zoom back. And one way to tell if current is flowing through this resistor is to measure the voltage across it because current through a resistor is its resistance and the voltage across it. You take the voltage across it divided by its resistance there is no voltage right there no voltage difference we can come here we can see that we have 1.6 volts there and then this jumper will mean that it's definitely 1.6 volts there no matter what because it's a jumper with no resistance and we can come to the resistor or the gate and see we have the same voltage so as long as the voltage is the same there is there there's no current going through so now we're going to look at the voltage in relationship to the source. So we're going to put that jumper there to the source. And we'll see we are 3.39 volts, so about 3.4 volts more negative at the gate than the source. So it cut off. It shut off completely as far as this uh, component is concerned. So now let's raise we're not measuring anything right now so I can block the display let's raise this let's turn the lights down and try to get it where it just starts conducting we'll see a little bit of a glow oh, uh, there we go so there we go that's pretty pretty close to spot on when it started conducting we'll turn the uh, light on and see what voltage we have here so it should be about uh, 2 volts yep right there because 2 volts is three volts less than five right there so negative uh, 2.9 so in in that range as this gets uh, closer to zero it will conduct better so we can see here we have at the gate two volts at the source five volts so it's three volts more negative let's turn the LED not to saturation but turn it on quite a bit more so yeah it's definitely on a fair amount there and we'll see again so we got 3 volts there 2.9 volts I should say and 2.9 the same so still no current flowing through there and uh, so that will give us a difference again of uh, 2.45 so it's not taking much voltage difference to get a fair amount more current flowing through there. Now, let's uh, turn this up to about 5 volts. And uh, let's watch the LED tell. Again, if we turn the lights down, it should be easier to tell. Let's see if we can find when it's about saturated so that it's not getting any brighter as we turn the voltage up. So, yeah, it looks like it's about this point here where it gets saturated so these aren't the best of test or whatever but the main takeaway is that to to cut this off we actually need a lower voltage at the gate than the source that is the main takeaway so again we will do a quick we got 7.4 there and 7.4 there so we know there's no current flowing through the gate which is good and it looks like we're probably saturated now. And when you look at the data sheet, actually, so we're, we're pretty close to about the same voltage there. So for some reason, it raised the voltage at the uh, source. So they are not electrically isolated like the MOSFET. That is the main takeaway. So there's N-type material from the drain and the source. N-type material. So it's not a great conductor, but it is a conductor. And uh, so it's, it's not a high value resistance, but it does provide some resistance. There's P type material at the gate. So when you have a more negative voltage, it is reverse bias, so no current is flowing. But 
when we get more positive by enough there will be current flow so we can see how much current will flow if we turn this trim pot all the way up to the positive rail and so we have this resistor here so we know it won't be more than a 10 milliamp since this is a 10 volt power supply plus the voltage differences within the component so there won't be 10 volts across it anyways but in any case we'll come here and see we have a 7.5 volts there which is interesting because we are at the positive rail I don't know I was measuring around so yeah we have 10 volts right there and I pushed on the component and it kind of lost the connection or something something like that it comes loose so let's try again should be 10 volts pretty much spot on because we're all the way to the rail there See 10 volts at the rail. So it's the trim pot set all the way up. It should also be 10 volts there. And that's odd. I don't know why we have that voltage drop. Oh well. The main takeaway is okay, we got 9 volts there. So it is 9 volts there. I don't know what's going on. But across the uh, resistor there, we got negative 1.262 volts. So that's because we are at the positive rail. So some then along here more negative so it have to be this negative rail it's pulling current uh, that way positive over to that way and so the amount of current that's flowing through there since a 1 kilo ohm resistor it has 1.26 volts across it so we know that 1.26 milliamps of current is flowing through it and it's flowing positive this way to a negative we can tell that when we flip it uh, this way so current flow is uh, relative based on the direction of the voltage across it. So, in any case, hopefully that all made sense and there's a lot to this component to be studied in written form and whatnot, but also with any component, try to build circuits yourself based on the basic principles. That will help you learn the component better. So, this again is a component I studied actually quite a bit, but it doesn't really make sense while you study it and there's not many demonstration circuits to uh, test it out but uh, as you can see this one I think is pretty easy to uh, follow where you can see that you can cut off the uh, voltage when you have a more negative voltage there so now according to the data sheet though there's a range of voltages where this may be possible so these components apparently you just cannot make them to be all exactly the same so they'll operate the same but uh, the voltages and uh, currents involved and stuff may differ so there will be manufacturer differences so it's probably a good idea to do tests like this just to see in this case the uh, cutoff value I'll try to find one with a different cutoff voltage and maybe uh, make a video on that uh, in the future but uh, in any case read the data sheets read the material people provide and experiment with the components so thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video